Hi, Easy Kids. Welcome back. It's Friday. It's almost the weekend. Wait a minute. Every day is like a weekend. Anyway, it's so great to be chatting with you again. Today, Molly and I want to tell you a Jesus story. This Jesus story takes place on the road. Jesus is traveling. By now, he is like a huge celebrity. He's like a really popular, famous YouTuber. He has tons of followers. They're like literally following him down the road. They're chanting his name. They're cheering, Hosanna, Hosanna. They're taking off their coats and they're throwing them on the ground for Jesus to walk on top of. Jesus you know, doesn't care for all of the excitement so much. He just keeps going. He's riding his donkey. He's coming into Jerusalem. He knows what's about to happen. But the crowds, they're elated. They're excited. Their emotions are high. Um, and they, they welcome Jesus back to Jerusalem. Unfortunately, very shortly after that, things change. People start to feel threatened by Jesus. People start to feel angry that Jesus is being so bold and caring for the poor and caring for people that are unloved and uh, marginal in, in, the, in the world, in, in the society. And they're getting angry. Um, later on, the disciples even, they start to feel discouraged and disappointed. They feel isolated. They even feel sad, so sad at the end. This story has so many emotions. So many high emotions, so many low emotions. It's just packed with emotions. When I think about this the last couple of weeks and the COVID virus, I think it has caused a lot of emotions uh, for all of us as well. Um, emotions are feelings and feelings are important. Um, and it's important to pay attention to what you're feeling during this time. So I want to play a game with you. I am going to show you a picture of an emoji and I want you to guess the emotion that this emoji is feeling. All right, let's start. Some of them are, we'll start with the easy ones. What is this emotion? Mad, angry. When have you recently felt angry? What made you angry? Did something happen uh, with your sibling? Were you angry that something was canceled that you were really looking forward to? Yeah, I felt angry too. How about this emotion? Sad. How many of you have felt sad? Maybe you've heard some sad stories on the news, stories about people getting sick, stories about, um, or, or maybe your grandparent is in the nursing home and you can't visit them and that has made you sad. There's lots of things that have made me sad. Here's another one. Frightened or anxious. I have felt a lot of this lately. What's gonna happen? How long are we gonna have to stay in our houses? I felt anxious. How do I do my job as a pastor when I can't be in my church? I have felt anxious too. What about this one? This one's more difficult. Disappointed. How many of you have been disappointed this, during this time? Maybe you can't celebrate your birthday. Maybe your graduation is canceled. There have been a lot of disappointments. Maybe you're just disappointed that you can't hang out with your friends. Oh, what about this one? Oh, maybe you see your parents doing this one a lot. Frustrated. Or maybe your siblings are getting on your nerves because you've all been cooped up in the house together for so long. Yes, we can feel frustrated. 
but it's not all hard emotions. I bet something has made you feel happy recently. Like we all get to, families get to eat together, um, or maybe you just enjoy all of the um, family time with not so many activities. Maybe you like our funny Zoom calls that we're doing with our church family and seeing your church family makes you feel happy. And lastly, I think this one shows someone being hopeful and prayerful. What are you hoping for right now? What makes you hopeful? There's so many emotions and they're all very, very important. Um, and one thing we can remember is that Jesus felt all of these emotions. Jesus knows exactly what we're going through. And so we can tell Jesus our feelings, but we can also tell our parents our feelings because that helps us care for one another. And so as we approach um, Easter, Easter is coming. We, even though we have all these yucky feelings that we're feeling, we can hold on to the promise that um, Jesus is with us. And no matter what we're, hard thing we're going through, Jesus' love can um, break through that and um, bring us to a place of happiness and joy. So we can wave our palm branches like the people in the crowd when Jesus, they were following Jesus. So I have a craft for you to do tomorrow if you're interested. Follow me, I'll show you. I once thought you could make your own palm branches. Um, this is super easy and you can basically do it with anything that you have in your house. So all you need is some green paper. I, the only green paper I had in my entire house was some wrapping paper from Christmas. But you might have construction paper or you might have like markers and crayons that you can use. Um, you need um, a stick from outside, a nice straight stick, something to cut the stick. So you might need help with your mom or your dad to help you with that. And some duct tape or strong tape. That's it. All you need. And then you can make your own palm bread. So I have my paper here. And what I did is I drew a big leaf on it. Here, I'll put it down. I drew a big leaf on my paper. And now all I have to do is cut it out. There we go. Just put that aside. So you can cut out construction paper into a big leaf. Or you can color a, a white piece of paper green and then draw your leaf on after that. It doesn't really matter. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Because leaf, every leaf I've ever seen is its own shape. There's not like a perfect way of drawing a leaf. Alright, so now I did that. I got my leaf and what I did is I drew a center line and I'll tell you why that's important because we are going to make the frills. See how this is all frilly? And you do that by just snipping little sections of the leaf like this. And you can do them far apart or close together. I'm going to do mine far apart. And but just be certain you don't cross your center line because that is where your stick is going to go. See, you turn it around and you do some more snips. It doesn't even have to be that straight. It's all windy. Maybe you want to do this inside so that it doesn't get all blown around from the wind. Here we go. Even the end. Okay. So now that you have your leaf all cut up, you take your stick and you measure it. And then you cut it to the right length. So I'm gonna cut mine around there. And then I get my tape. Oop, that's okay. I'm gonna get my tape. 
and I'm going to tape my stick down. There's one piece like that. And then I'm gonna do another piece. Duct tape is nice and strong. So the it won't rip off. There we go. You can tape it more than I did, but that's it. And you have your leaf and you uh, can wave it. We're going to be asking all of the children to bring their palm branches to uh, these um, to Sunday morning church, and you're going to be invited to wave them in front of the camera. So um, you can uh, look forward to that. If you want to do something really fun, here my paper blew away, but you can even, if you want to be a little more messy, you can take paint and you can paint your hand and then you can make a palm branch out of handprints. And then all you do is cut it out and do the same thing. You can tape the stick onto the back. So that's just another idea. Or you can just Draw your own leaf and be really creative and do whatever you want. Anyway, that is my idea for you and I hope you enjoyed this little video. I want you to remember that um, you are the church, rooted in Christ, growing together in faith, extending God's love. Bye everyone.